joined in studio now by the man, the myth, the legend, Woodlawn <laughs> CEO John Alley. Morning. Good, good morning. I, I almost wanted to rename your song to Manic 2020. It's yeah, just the money of the whole year of 2020. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, we had our board meeting yesterday and uh, kind of you know wrapping up everything for the year. So it was kind of a reflection. What have all we gone through so far? And surprise, it kind of COVID was the main topic that we had to discuss. So you know, just kind of a recap of some of the things that's happened in 2020 with us. Um, you know, when we go back and look at March, April, May, uh, we virtually had no patients. We shut everything down. We were doing emergency services only. So, you know, we thought it was really bad then because, you know, the number of COVID patients. Well, it's worse now than it was back then. If you look now at the total number of, of positive patients that we saw that started seeing November, December, January, it far exceeded those early months. So I think we've learned a lot of how to cope with that, you know, once we got past that initial, you know, fear, I guess, of the COVID. So it, uh, you know, it's been a learning experience. How do you handle this and so as we can move forward? Uh, once we did reopen come, uh, you know, June or so, started to open up slightly, still did not see a lot of patients come in because they would call and say, I'm still too scared. I don't want to come in yet. So it, uh, you know, it was just an odd year when you start looking. We knew there was people out there really needing health care services, couldn't get them to come in. And, and you don't blame them. You know, they're, they were scared. It was, a, you know, really scary early on. Um, you know, mid to late year, we started seeing much more stress on our, our frontline workers. You know, they're just seeing more and more and more and every day you know it's increase and increase and you know you don't understand you know what uh, we were discussed a little bit before we went on air about putting on all the protective equipment you have to put it all on you go in the room you come out you have to take it all off five minutes later you got you got to put it all back on again that wears on you doing that you know yeah. over and over and you know we tried to assign uh, for our covid unit you know today it's these two nurses these three and then the next day, assign it to somebody else. But again, a small facility, you can't spread that around to a lot of staff. So, you know, they, they spend a lot of time, where, you know, dealing with these patients. And, you know, it's got to wear from the fear, is the PPE going to work? You know, am I taking this home to my family? And one of the things that, you know, we look back on uh, yesterday was, did we have any of our healthcare workers uh, catch COVID while at work? And by doing our contact tracing, the answer is no. So, the PPE worked. You know, when you look at those frontline individuals that was in there every day, the masks, the gowns, it worked. Not one of those tested positive. Have we had employees test positive? Yes. But when we do the contact tracing, well, yeah, I went to this wedding or we had this big family dinner. So you can all trace that back to those where they didn't wear their PPE. So, you know, for those skeptics that say, oh, it doesn't work, yeah, it does. You know, and when, when I can say without a doubt, we had zero exposure inside the hospital dealing with day-to-day -day dealing with COVID patients by wearing the PPE. So, you know, it does work. Um, you know, the vaccine, that came up from the board meeting. Where are we at on that? Uh, we've applied to be a 1B site with the state of Indiana. Harry at uh, Webb's Pharmacy, they've applied. The latest information we got yesterday is they're out of vaccine. So once a new shipment comes in, we're hoping to see it and get so we can open up have more spots in the county for you to get your vaccine. Right now, the health department are still have vaccine. They're still doing those. I think it's 70 and over. Um, so again, as more becomes available, it's going to be out there more sites. I can't stress the importance. Get the vaccine. You know, right now they're 90 plus percent effective. Uh, when you consider the COVID or the vaccine, get the vaccine. I've had both my doses, so I can. You know, I can give you the first-hand testimonial. The first shot, arm was a little sore for about 30 minutes, went away. Second shot had a little more reaction to it, which is what it's supposed to do. Right. So, you know, don't be surprised. Don't be upset. And the second one, say, oh, I feel worse than I did my first one. It's normal. Lasted about three hours. Perfectly fine after that. So, you know, get your vaccines. You know, it just if it comes available, do it. But more importantly, continue to wear the mask. They need to cover your nose and your mouth unless you're a person who doesn't breathe through your nose. And I haven't found anybody yet that doesn't breathe through their nose. But you see everybody with the mask just over their mouth, it does no good. It, this is transmitted you know, through your breath. Uh, it's droplets. So, you know, the mask doesn't prevent you from catching it. It prevents you from giving it to somebody. So we can't stress enough, please wear the mask. 
hearing a lot about, well, there's a new variant out there now. Yes, it's a virus. It mutates to meet its environment. So, you know, it's, you, you hate to say it, but it's like a little living organism, and it's smart. Yeah. So if it starts sensing that there's, our bodies are reacting different, it's going to change. The good thing is the vaccine is still effective against all the variants that they've seen so far. So I, I think that's going to be, since it's a fairly broad spectrum vaccine, and it attacks the spike protein, which is what this virus has, it's effective. So it is going to work. And so by mid-year, I'm hoping everybody's vaccinated and we can kind of see the end to the madness we've been through. Um, you know, do, do I like wearing a mask all the time? No. They're uncomfortable. You know, I haven't seen clearly for a while because every time you breathe, you fog up. Because, you know, for, yeah. for you guys without glasses, that's not a problem. But for us folks who wear glasses, we, we're living in a fog. But again that's one of the it's a necessary evil so really can't stress enough get the vaccine continue to wear your mask social distance wear it over your nose and mouth cover both of those so after we kind of got through that discussion we kind of got down to a little bit of business at the meeting a couple major projects we're looking for in 2021 uh, probably the biggest one is a roof repair we've kind of put it off for 2020 because couldn't do it yeah and, uh, you know, the roof's not in bad shape, but it's starting to show its age. It's about 12 years old, and for that type of roof, 10 years is usually about all the, they're good for. So, mm, excuse me, we will be doing a major roof repair project this year. I'm hoping we don't have to tear everything up and start over, but there are some spots where we're starting to see it pulled away from, from the walls, some cracks in the, in the decking. So uh, that's going to be something, and once we get in a little nicer weather, we'll get that started. Uh, looking at some renovation to the north end of the Schaefer building. Uh, that's been left open for quite a few years. So we're trying to figure out what can we put in there. So we're probably going to put some office space in there. So we're looking for that project to start late this year, early next year to be completed. And that's pretty well it as far as major items we're looking at. Uh, we did got into the financials for the month. We had uh, It did pick up a little bit. We're starting to see a rebound of... of uh, Patients coming again. Some folks are still scared, not wanting to come in. Uh, about $13 million was our gross billings. Uh, we wrote off about $8 million of that, so again, we're still doing a lot of the write offs. We had some other revenue, about $339,000. Operating expenses, about $5.6 million, so that gave us an operational loss, <coughs> excuse me, about $226,000, which is not that bad because when we started looking what caused that. At year end, we did kind of stock up on some supplies because we know come January 1, there's always a price increase. Yeah. So, you know, let's buy it now. We know we're going to use it. And most of the time, we're looking at saving between 5 and 12% if we buy it in December as opposed to buy it in January. Uh, we had some non operating revenue, which looked really good, about $1.3 million. And uh, so I'm kind of getting excited on that. But what it was, it was actually that we found that the uh, state and federal government had underpaid us on what's called upper payment limit and there's a program where the government will help subsidize the Medicaid population so they try to say okay if you're underpaid Medicaid we'll at least pay you at the Medicare level well we've been underpaid during the year so they we kind of got that surprise check there at the end of the year saying you know hey we, we found a mistake which is kind of nice so when you put that in we then wind up with a net income for the month about 1.1 million but a lot of that is, is funds we should have gotten January you know, through December, we right. were just short paid the, for the whole year. So that was kind of like that uh, nice little Christmas present, I guess, for lack of a better <laughs> term, uh, that came in to help boost that bottom line. Uh, we're still dealing with a, a lot of the money we got from the feds. We still don't know what we can use it with. Um, every time we start to apply it, they say, oh, well, wait a minute, we've changed our mind. So we just don't know what's going to happen with some of that money. We put it in a restricted fund, kind of in a savings account, till we know what we're going to have to do with it. My best guess is we're going to have to probably send most of it back just because of their change in their mind so much how it's going to be used. One of the, the latest now is they're going to look at our 2019 net revenue, compare that to your 2020 net revenue, and then you can use this money to bring your 2020 up to whatever your 2019 was. So again, we're it's just so, so many changes in it. We don't know what to do with it. We're just kind of ignoring it right now waiting for them to tell us send it back. We'll send the money back, but at least we're getting, you know, a little bit of interest on that money as we're sitting there just trying to decide what to do with it. 
there's still a program uh, where we got a loan basically from the federal government for March, April, and May from Medicare to help you know make up those losses. Right. And they said, what we'll do when business picks up again, we'll start re reducing that loan by what we would have paid you. And that was supposed to start in August. They still have not started any of that take back on that program. There's a bill in Congress now uh, and going to Senate to make that a, um, not a loan, but a grant. So that would really help. I mean, we wouldn't have to pay that money back. But we're still treating that right now as a loan until we know for sure that that money is going to be forgiven. So uh, just it's a lot of unknowns for 2020. Uh, you look at the financials, and if you don't know all the background, you get really excited when you look at them. But then you say, well, I need to take this out and this out because it all has that potential to be refunded back. And you know, our goal is we want what's due us, but if it's not due us, it needs to go back. You know, yes. we, and everybody should treat it that way. I mean, uh, it was nice to get that money, and it was kind of a really nice safety blanket during those months when you were just had no idea what was going on. Now that's over. We've gotten used to it, and uh, you know, we were kind of looking at, at numbers, and we've actually, the past three months, COVID has been worse in this state than it was March, April, May when everybody was it first started. Yeah, uh, we've looking at our visitation policy. If we can see a consistent and sustainable decline in the amount of new cases in the state and the county, we're wanting to open it back up slightly. Right now, there's no visitors right now. We'd like to get that point where we can say, okay, maybe one, and again, keep seeing declines in new cases, then open it back up like it was because it's stressful enough to be in the hospital, but when you can't see your loved ones, and the best thing you can do is talk to them on a the phone or on a Zoom meeting or you know whatever, it just it's not what we want but for their you know patient safety we're still restricting the movement through the building we want to keep it under control best we can and I think we've done a fairly good job of controlling within the building the spread of COVID uh, just by limiting people coming in because we're still seeing a majority of the population will test positive for COVID and have absolutely zero symptoms they feel fine but yeah. they still have the active disease so they're spreading it and they don't even know it because they right. say, I feel fine, I don't have it. Well, you might. So, uh, you know, that's still, it's, it's an odd disease. We're still learning. Every day new stuff comes out about it. You know, the other question is, was the vaccine good for life? Don't know. You know, so we're going on the assumption now, it's probably going to be an annual. It'd be nice if it's a one and done and not have to do this again. But I think if everybody just keeps it in their mind, it's going to be like the flu. Every year you get a flu because it changes a little bit. I'm just guessing COVID might be that same way. When you get your flu shot, it'll be a flu COVID combo shot, and then you're good for another year. And as this virus mutates, like they all do, it changes every year. So, uh, you know, it's, I hate to say it, it's kind of interesting monitoring how this thing is changing and what it's doing and how we're fighting it. And I think some of the technology that we have now, 10 years ago, we couldn't have fought it. Yeah. I, th I think we're really science has got to the point they understand it they know what it is and uh, it's just kind of I'd be glad when it's over it'd be nice to be able to you know not have to wear a mask all day and, and go back out and actually have a, a good meal uh, you know my wife is babysitting some grandkids uh, southern Indiana so you know the frozen dinners are getting old <laughs> it'd be nice to be able to go out but again you just got to protect yourselves light at the end of the tunnel hang in there folks hopefully by mid-year most of this will be behind us and we can halfway get back to normal again yeah so that was kind of the board meeting again it's kind of a reflection of 2020 yeah um one of the questions i have and uh you would definitely be somebody that i could ask this to um are the vaccines um being done as quickly as we planned i think they underestimated the demand okay and that's my personal opinion um i i think they didn't plan on as many people wanting to get it immediately because like anything else there's always that group that says well you get it first and then let me know how you feel then I'll think about it so I think that's part of the shortfall right now um, I knew the manufacturers have really geared up both Pfizer and Moderna saying they've increased their production and the, the latest information from the state is they're hoping within the next week or so massive shipments are coming in so we can start getting everybody in that again Right now, they've concentrated on healthcare workers, first responders, uh, nursing home residents, and those folks over 70, because that's kind of your high-risk group right yeah. now. 
and then I think get those done. Then they're going to open it up to the general public. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly easy process. Uh, probably the, from the point I checked in till I exited the facility, it's like 17 minutes and 15 minutes of that is sitting there waiting to make sure you're not going to have an adverse reaction. And do I think that's overkill? Yeah, but I think everybody's wanting to be very careful. It is a new vaccine. So you get your vaccine. They, take, they want you to hang around for a little bit, make sure you're fine, and then uh, you can leave. So I think as we get more people vaccinated, it's probably going to be, here's your shot, have a good day. I'm not sure you're going to have to sit around for that 15 minutes. Right. But they're just wanting to make sure that there is not that one group of people out there that this is going to have an adverse effect of. So uh, working very well. Um, the vaccine, you know, both Pfizer and Moderna is very effective. And uh, so we're just looking now for what's the long term. Is it, is it going to be a one and done or is it going to be an every year? I think that's the next biggest question. And of course, um, if you get your first shot from one brand, you need to get your second shot from that brand. It must well. be the same brand, yeah. They, they have not looked at can you cross, you know, vaccinate, get a, a Pfizer and a Moderna. So right now they're making sure if you had a Pfizer the first one, you're going to get a Pfizer your second. If you got a Moderna the first, you're going to get that one next. Uh, I know there are some new ones out there that's just one shot, not the two shots. Uh, I don't think those have been released in Indiana yet. I think they're still in some of the, that uh, trial phase. Yeah. But there's a possibility at some point as we move down and get more companies producing the vaccine, it might be a one shot and that's it instead of the two. So again, unknown virus, we're learning a lot. Every day new stuff comes out and uh, so it's just, can't stress it enough, get your vaccine, still wear your mask, social distance for another few months. Just hang in there, you know, let's get through this together and kind of get back to normal as we get into the summer months. All right, well, uh, Mr. Alley, thank you so much for all your information. Um, you're always a wealth of knowledge. I always learn something new when you come in here. I uh, look forward to seeing you again in February. Yeah, it's one of those, you know, you can become a Google expert on this stuff if you spend <laughs> enough time doing it. So, uh, I, yeah. you know, that's, that's, I still, I like to kind of know what's coming. So I spend a lot of time doing the research, you know, looking at different medical studies and stuff. So, uh, you know, you can do that too. And it, it's just, some of you got to filter, you know, you got to yeah. watch part of it. So I try to go to, you know, reputable sites that are, you know, teaching universities to see what they're doing. But uh, again, we're going to get through this. Please, please wear your mask, get your vaccine when it becomes available. All right, thank you. Um, I'll definitely be getting mine as soon as they're available. You're, you're still one of the young ones yet, yeah. so you got to wait a while. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be in the last group. Yeah. So that's okay by me, but I'm definitely uh, willing to get it when it's time for it. Good. Glad to hear that. All right, we'll see you next month. Okay. Thank you.